Hello everyone and welcome back to To Be Like Christ for our Bible study through today, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Uh, it's a little bit darker in this room today. I'm losing the light because it's a little bit later in the day than I usually film because my wife and I were on a bit of a, a trip the last couple of days. But uh, so I have to be quick before I lose the light. So I think we can do that. Our first page, not very much is going to has well, not very much has changed for the first 16 chapters. So as far as when these events happened, we are still in about 1450 BC, right after the Israelites finished their wanderings in the wilderness. Our characters for this chapter are again going to be the Israelites and Moses, who has led them to the borders of the promised land they're just about to go in. And I should mention as we fly through this information, if you want the PDF that contains this information, it's on the website for free and there's a link down in the description. You can download it and spend all the time that you want. <laughs> Now, going down to our map, our map here, you'll see the uh, Sinai Peninsula, you'll see Egypt. We are over in the right, the top right corner. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that the Israelites were in Moab near Mount Pisgah when Moses was delivering this series of speeches that's recorded in Deuteronomy. In chapter 16, we're going to talk a lot about the feasts, the feasts that the Israelites were supposed to observe on an annual basis. Now, if you want to know more information about this, we have studies in the book of Leviticus, Exodus, that talk about this a lot more and give a lot of more, a lot more details about the feasts. Specifically, I believe it's Leviticus that does. So you can check out those five-minute studies if you want more details. This is just, again, Moses reminding the people of what they're supposed to be doing. Hopefully, they already know this information. The Passover feast is the first one that he reminds them about in verses 1 through 8. So in the month of Abib, the Israelites were supposed to observe the Passover feast, which was a memorial of how God had saved the Israelites and their firstborn children while in Egypt, and God had given them freedom after that tenth plague. Remember when they put the, the blood of the lamb that they had sacrificed on their doorpost, and their, the firstborn within their house didn't die. God passed over their house and saved them. So this Passover feast memorialized that. The next feast was the Feast of Weeks, verses 9 through 12. Seven weeks after the grain harvest began, the Israelites were supposed to observe the Feast of Weeks. Now, during the Feast of Weeks, the Israelites were to remember how they had been slaves in Egypt. And during this time, they were to bring a free will offering to God's appointed place of worship and to, quote, rejoice before the Lord. All right, so that's the Feast of Weeks. Now the Feast of Booths, verses 13 through 17. The Feast of Booths was to be observed at the conclusion of the harvest. It was the last seven days, and all of the Israelites were supposed to keep the feast at God's appointed place of worship. So we have three feasts here, Passover, Weeks, and Booths. These were the three times that the Israelite men were supposed to come to this appointed place of worship, and that's where they were supposed to celebrate the feast. They were not supposed to celebrate them in you know, their hometown or just wherever they wanted. They were all supposed to, to come together. So we see kind of the centralization of the, the Israelites' uh, religious life. The chapter concludes by moving on from these memorial feasts and talking about a few other things, verses 18 through 20 appointing judges and officers in the cities. So Moses instructed the Israelites to appoint officers in each of their towns to judge the people and to uphold righteousness. So any you know, minor things that needed to be sorted out, maybe even some bigger things that needed to be sorted out, maybe from a legal standpoint or a civil, civ civic standpoint, these officers and judges would handle those issues. And these officers were supposed to be upright men who would uphold righteousness, and they would not take a bribe or pervert justice in any way. And then maybe you could have guessed what we're going to talk about. We can't miss a chapter without talking about forbidding idol worship in, in Israel. So verses 21 and 22, I feel like we've, 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 Moses has brought this up so much, forbidden worship. So no Asherah was to be incorporated into the worship of the true God. And Asherah, you can do a lot of study on it. There's not exact clarity on what these were, but most people think that the Asherah were pagan figures, usually made out of wood, that stood beside Canaanite pagan places of worship. Israel was also forbidden from erecting pillars that were associated with false gods. So now for application, I want to address this, this repetition of this this prohibition against idol worship and draw an application from it. We've already done this a couple times, but why did the Israelites need to keep these annual feasts 
and, and go through these ceremonies. Right? Why is that important? Well, God doesn't institute memorials just so he can force us to go through rituals every year. He does it because he knows that people are forgetful and that they need reminded. I think the perfect example of this is Moses' repeated and repeated and repeated warnings against idolatry that seem to pop up in every single chapter in the book of Deuteronomy. It didn't take long before the Israelites started worshiping idols and Asherah, just like Moses had told them not to do a million times. In Judges chapter 3, we read about the Israelites erecting these Asherahs because they forgot the lessons that had been repeated again and again here in Deuteronomy and in other places. So in application, when God tells us to keep a, a memorial, like for example, the Lord's Supper right in, in the modern church, we need to take it seriously. We need to repeat it regularly and engage in it with our minds to recall the lessons that we're meant to learn through those memories being resurrected. The Bible is clear that when people forget memorials, they forget the lessons of the past. And we certainly don't want to be like the Israelites where we've been warned about something again and again and again in the past. But since we've neglected that word for so long, we've neglected the things that God wants to remind us of, we forget them and we end up falling into that sin that people warned about us forever. People warned us against forever.